You mean I'm going to literally hold this? You're going to literally hold that tight. Is this a trust thing? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, I'm holding it tight. So this ICG MS-70, it's a 2006. I don't know if this camera will show it, but mm, right above, yeah, the A in America. I don't know if I can get in tight enough. There is a scratch right across the silver. See above the A? Right there. That's not the plastic. So how can that be an MS-70? Well, the guys on t on the cable TV coin show bought it. <laughs> so, so would you agree that this is not an MS-70, Tim? I would, yeah. I just see a lot of them like that. That's why... You do? If they mark 69, I just crack them out. So would you say this is a 69 and worth cracking? It says 70. Yeah, if it was 69, I would definitely crack it out. If it, you know, but it's because it 70, says 70, and I'll even you, though it doesn't look it... I'll it, let you crack it out. <laughs> you want me to, huh? Hmm. Maybe I should buy this and bring it back and crack it out for a video. That would be kind of neat. Probably damage it far more than it already is, right? How, how do you... What's the best way to take them out of this thing? Dremel tool. A dremel. Yeah. You want to use the saw. Okay. The circular saw blade. Yep, yep, I have one. If you want, I'll just go get one from upstairs. You can see what you want to do. Oh. The, um, the hard thing is when you're using this on metal, mm -hmm. it throws filings in the air, very small sure. filings. Sure. Um, and using it on a plastic, it melts the plastic. Oh, okay. So you have to do it kind of in stages because once it starts to get sticky, then it just it's doesn't work open. right. Right. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, there are two ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. One is you just go across the top in this groove, across the top here, yeah. in which case then you can just crack it open. Mm -hmm. um, you can try going down the side, but there's not, it, that requires it to be in like a vice so you can go very okay. precisely. Yep. Um, since you're going to hold on to this coin, we're probably just going to go this yeah. way through both sides yep. and then try to crack it. Okay. Because you're going to hold it. I don't want to cut your fingers off. Oh, oh, I said. I thought you said I was going to keep it. You mean I'm going to literally hold this? You're going to literally hold that tight. Is this a trust thing? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, I'm holding it tight. Wow. Now I have to figure out how to get that out of there. So. <laughs> <laughs> then I want to hold it tight again. I'll hold it tight again. I'm Which way do you want to hold it? Steady. This way? Yeah, I'm going to go down the corner. Yikes. Special tool wow. that I use to crack things open. <laughs> the important thing is to leave the coin, the coin alone. Oh, yeah, man. no kidding. I was thinking about that coin. Where's it? Oh, it's hot. Right. Yeah, that coin definitely came to mind. Yeah. We may have to do these <laughs> corners if we can't press them. Right, right. There we go. There you go. Cool. Nice. Thank you, Tim. <laughs>
This goes into my stack. <laughs> I made a mess of your, of yeah, your yeah. top. Look at this. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate it. Anytime. So talk to me about the refinery and, and wholesalers and what you do when it comes well, to silver in, prices. in 2011, when I got a chance to go to the refinery, it, the um, I think it was to help the wholesaler load the pallet with these heavy um, five-gallon buckets that had all sterling silver in and um, you know these pallets are were stacked up to the ceiling huh. in this at the, in their warehouse. Yep. And uh, you know I was talking with a the guy there who was you know, checking it in. They put it on a scale. They weighed it, and then he put a receipt on it. They shrunk wrap it and then put it up on the stack. Uh, I said, "Is this all sterling silver?" He said, "Oh yeah. When this is done, there won't be a tea set left in America." <laughs> now. And that was 2011 when the okay. price of silver went up was to way up. 49.50 right. at one point. Right. Um, now the amount of uh, sterling silver that they're scrapping is minuscule by comparison. You know, they maybe get a couple of pallets a week. Wow. And um, you know, this I think there are probably nine of these five-gallon buckets. And basically, what they do is they they th throw the hollowware, you know, the flatware in the bucket. Put a platform, made a you know a three quarter inch plywood platform on it. It's got a bundle of two by fours on the bottom, uh -huh. and they jump up and down and squash it down. Okay? And then, then <laughs> they throw, seriously, really, they... seriously, they take you know put, throw more hollow wear in there, put the platform on and jump up and down. Oh my word! So these things are really heavy. Yeah, it's yeah, all they, this yeah, silver squashed in the bottom of yeah. this thing. Um, but you know that's in 2011. Everybody was bringing sterling silver down. Um, now it's dwindling. I think I've been down there maybe in 2019, maybe three times with a five gallon bucket, one of those Home Depot buckets right. full of sterling silver. That's a lot less than we were usually, we used to take down there in the, you know, the 2010, 2011 time frame. So the volume coming in, the, the amount that their scrappers are getting is dropped precipitously? It's dropped dramatically. Now, what were they doing with the sterling silver they were taking in by the truckload? Uh, they're making the Comex blocks, the 5,000 ounce blocks oh, that the okay. Comex, the NYMEX, the CME have to have when mm. they're, you know, they're mm -hmm. buying and selling, they're trading silver. Mm -hmm. Those transactions are supposed to be backed up by, by 5,000 contract amounts right. of silver. Um, so if the refineries aren't taking it in, they're not making these blocks at the same rate they used to. Uh, so. Mm. If that was going to the COMEX to back up the, you know, the, um, the COMEX sales, the ETFs, things yes, like that. Yes, yeah. The ETFs um, are supposed to be, yeah, all so, back. So up. where are they getting their silver from? Where indeed? Probably from the mines. They probably... Yeah, but their production is down too. Their production is down because it's, it's getting too costly at these prices. Right. They can't make a profit. Shut down the mine you know, and wait. Mining for it. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing now is they're sewing up the output the future output of a mine and calling that real silver to back up the ETFs and the Oh, comics. I see. So it's virtual silver. It's virtual potential, silver. potential it's silver. Potential that... silver is probably the right oh, word, yeah. Wow. And and that's, you know, that hmm. that can't go on forever as, you know, as the um, the fact that we have a $21 trillion debt and the, the biggest expense is, that's adding to the debt is the interest payments Absolutely. on the debt. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's a, a reset in the future, but you, you can't have a reset in gold or silver. You can only have a soaring uh, price of gold and silver so that, you know, the spot price will start going up mm -hmm. whenever they, mm -hmm. you know, proverbial, when the silver hits the fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what one thing do you think will precipitate? The silver hitting the fan, as you say. I, I think it's just the the uh, lack of inventory. Back in that that same 2010 to mm. the 11 time frame, I go into the wholesaler and he'd have, you know, a dozen of these five gallon buckets ready to go to the refinery. If I go down there now, he may have four or five buckets, mm. and you know, until he gets a good load, he doesn't even bother to go down to the refinery. So supply or the lack thereof, you think? I think that's really going, going to. That's really going to be constrained soon. Wow. 
Fascinating. And, and we're seeing it because the margins are starting to go up a little bit at the wholesale level. Mm. Um, I bought a bunch of prospectors from the wholesaler. He always calls me when he has anything angle hard. Um, a lot yeah. of those are absolutely gone. Uh, I did manage to save a few rolls in case you, you have people who are interested in the prospectors. Yeah, I, but I um, yeah, I have to pay as much for those as I pay for American Eagles now wow. because they, you know, they haven't made anything since what 1986. Exactly. That's a and, when they're yeah, gone, they're, they're gone. They're going yeah. into people's holdings and they're not coming mm -hmm. back out. They are. <laughs> now the, the, they come in, but but I don't sell it. <laughs> well, the American Eagles come from yeah. our strategic silver reserves. And it was a real issue um, back in the 60s when they decided to take the silver out of the coins. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the silver had already been allocated by Congress out of the reserves. Once they take it out of the reserves, they can't replace it back in those. There's no mechanism to do that. So when they take it out for the minting process, right. it's allocated. And keep in mind that the U.S. Mint is still making lots and lots and lots of silver coins. Yeah. All the commemorative coins were all made to the same standard as the Morgan Peace Dollar. Uh, you mm. know, they were mm -hmm. you know, 0 0.77344 of a troy ounce per dollar. Okay, uh, They are going to change that for the commemorative sets that they're making. They're all going to make everything 9991 ounce. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, yep. uh, Just because the American Eagles are popular, yeah. the commemorative sets are not popular. That's, and people mm -hmm. can't do the math because the math doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It made sense when Thomas Jefferson suggested the numbers, but that was to make the ratio between gold and silver 25 to 1. Okay, um, You know, they Nobody cares about ratios anymore. Nobody cares Seems about that way. It. We don't make Morgan and Peace dollars anymore. Nope. The only ones we make to that standard are the commemorative dollars. And nobody's buying the commemorative dollars. They want pure silver. Yeah. If they want it at all. can relate to pure silver. Right. And even though a troy ounce doesn't relate to anything in the world, <laughs> um, that's become the standard. Um, what has our little Yankee swap thing uh, been to you? It's probably a drop in the bucket compared to all the stuff that you sell. But you know, I've been trying to get some sales coming in, helping people out. Has that helped at all? Anything else? Oh, anything else? Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tim. Appreciate it. Okay. We'll do this again sometime. <laughs>